and we're ready to go into Substance Painter. Okay, so now we're in Substance Painter, you want to go to File, New, you want to set the template to Adobe Dimension Algorithmic, and set your document resolution to whatever resolution you want to work with. I'm going to go 4K because I know that I can easily uh, downsize it later on. And you want to select your file, and of course your file is going to be the tree object file that we exported from 3ds Max earlier on. Okay, so a quick bit of navigation around uh, the 3D um, aspect of Substance Painter. In your perspective viewport, you can rotate around your object by holding down Alt and left clicking. If you hold down Alt and push in the middle mouse button, you can move. And if you just scroll the middle mouse button backwards and forwards, you can zoom in and out. Okay, so if you can't see um, any background imagery in your scene here, like me, then you'll need to go to Window and go to Views and go to Display Settings. Make sure that your environment opacity is up to 100. And if it's a bit blurry like it is on mine, then just make sure your environment blur is, is nice and low. In the texture set list, I'm going to change the name to tree. I'm now going to go down to texture set settings. And for this, we only really need a uh, base color and height. So I'm going to get rid of these other maps. As you can see, I've gotten rid of that original layer by deleting it, just that bin icon. I'm now going to go over to the create a fill layer. So that's the paint bucket icon just here. So I'm going to click that. And what we're going to want to do is to fill this object with that bark texture. Now, just introducing you to the shelf. On the shelf, you can find several folders. I'm currently looking at the environment folder. So in the environment folder is where all of your uh, background environments will be located. You can change them if you want to. I'm just going to leave it as this default panorama. So we go down to properties fill. I'm just going to isolate the color material. And what we are going to want to do is to import into our textures folder that bark texture that we just created in Photoshop. So I'm going to go ahead and locate that in my Windows folder. And I'm going to drag and drop it into the textures folder within Substance. Now, when you're importing the resources, you'll notice that you've got a button here that says undefined. So you want to click on that and select texture, select the drop down list and select texture and import it to your shelf. Okay, so this is going to make sure that it all goes to the right place. So if I now go to textures, you'll see my bark texture there. I'm now going to go to base color and I'm going to click and select that bark texture. As you can see, it's now been applied to my model, but it looks pretty horrible. I'm just going to bring back that roughness map. And I want the roughness to be maximized. So it's right at the top. So when a material is uh, um, rougher, it's going to be less reflective. And obviously, this is a bark texture. I don't want it to be reflective at all. So I'm going to maximize that. Now, if we go up to some of these properties, you'll notice that you've got um, some sliders. I'm adjusting the scale of the texture here because it was quite stretched out. So I want it to tile a little more. And I'm just going to alter the rotation of the bark so that it lines up with the natural contour of the tree trunk. And I'm going to offset it slightly. Now, it's entirely down to you how you manipulate these sliders. Just get it to a point where it looks best. Okay, It doesn't have to be completely finished. Um, but get it as best as you can at this point before we go uh, making some further alterations. Okay, What I'm now going to do is to activate the height material. And under height, I am also going to select that same bark texture. So as you can see, it has now applied uh, some normal detail to the model. Okay, I'm now at a point where I'm quite happy with that so far. Now I want to make some further manipulations that I can't possibly make uh, with the offset sliders. So I'm just going to create a new blank layer. And as you can see, I can now paint on this layer manually like so. Now, what I want to be able to do is to paint using some of that bark texture, kind of like what we did in Photoshop. I want to sample some of it. 
So what I'm going to do is go down to the paint properties. I'm going to change this alpha to a different brush type. And once again, I'm going to set the base color to the bark texture. Now I can also adjust the stroke opacity to choose how intense uh, this bark texture paint is going to be. Just as before, I can also add the bark to the height material, and this will allow me to simultaneously paint height data and color data. You can also adjust the rotation of your brush by holding down control and clicking and dragging. Now that I'm quite happy with what I've done with bark extracted image, I'm gonna to want to go in there and do some manual painting. So what I'm going to do is to just remove those materials from the base color and normal uh, material. And I'm going to select a dark base color. And on the height slider, I'm going to push that into the minus. I'm going to paint some more cracks and crevices into this tree trunk. Once again, you can alter the intensity of this by using your stroke capacity. Now what quite a lot of trees have are these knots and hollows so don't be afraid to put some of them in but be aware that this is meant to be a modular tree so you don't want anything that's going to make it look too unique now of course as well as using a dark color and a height that is penetrating into the tree we can do the opposite we can use a lighter color and we can use a, uh, a height in the plus as well so it looks like it's extruding out of the tree so this is completely user dependent. You can unleash a bit of your artistic merit here. Just remember, you don't want anything that looks too unique. Okay, once you've got this to a point that you're happy with, you want to go to File and Export Textures. And it's going to export the tree texture set. Just simply select where you want it to go and press Export. Okay, so now we're back in 3ds Max. The first thing you want to do is change where it says standard to high quality. Okay, now I'll press M to go to the material editor. You want to go down to where your maps are. And the diffuse color, this is where you want to put the color map. And on bump, you want to make sure that's set to 100. So I'm just going to go into the diffuse color map and I'm going to locate the tree base color that we just exported from Substance. Go back to parent to get back to that map slot. Now I'm going to go down to bump. And you want to go to normal map. And then under normal map, you want to go to bitmap. And then of course you want to locate your tree normal map file. And once you've got it selected, make sure you select override, gamma override. Otherwise it may not appear as you want it to. Drag and drop that onto your model. And then go to views, show materials and viewport as realistic with maps. Now you should see your texture maps. That's all come out pretty fine. Okay, good. Now we need to create some leaves for this tree. Okay, so now we're in Photoshop. As you can see, I've got the diffuse texture for the tree bark up. I'm just going to select the polygonal lasso tool, and I'm going to select all of this uh, negative area in the texture space. I'm going to create a new layer by pressing Control J, and I'm just going to fill in this selected area black. So I haven't got any of this colored texture messing up the rest of the space there. So in that area, I'm now going to copy in an image of some pine tree leaves. And I'm just going to isolate some of these leaves. Now, this can be quite time consuming. I'm doing this manually by uh, removing the negative area with the eraser. If the leaves that you are copying in do have uh, a white background or a background that is a completely different color to the actual leaves, then uh, please check out my other video. There is a quicker way to do this. Uh, in this video, I am going to do it manually, so I'll just speed up this part. This is something that you should take a lot of time with, though. It's definitely not a part of the process you want to rush. So if you check a video in my description called How to Remove White Background from an Image, uh, this might help you with this part of the uh, process. So once I've fully isolated some of these leaves, I'm going to want to take a section of them and then copy it over to another part of my texture space. Basically what we're trying to do here is create multiple variations of these leaves that we can then use to apply to our model. 
It's also an idea to adjust the saturation level. You can do this by holding down Control U. And normally you just want to create a bit more variation in the colors. You don't want them all to be the same color. You can also flip some of these images horizontally or vertically and edit them as you see fit. Further bash them together, create multiple layers, just anything you can to build up that variation. What I'm going to do here is create a master branch. So as you can see, I've got loads of these leaf bundles together and I'm just adjusting the light and saturation value on all of them. Ultimately, what we're going to do is apply these textures to flat planes in the 3D scene and that's going to save a lot of memory. The last thing we want to be doing in 3ds Max is modeling every single one of these leaves. It will just absolutely kill the graphics card and memory. So think of this as a way of being very, very economic. Okay, so I've pretty much finished texturing these leaves. That's my color map done. What I now need to do is to create an opacity map, which is going to tell the computer what parts of the texture space I want to be visible and what parts of the texture space I don't want to be visible. Okay, now opacity maps read in grayscale. So white is visible and black is invisible. The easiest way to create one of these maps is to simply copy and paste the layer that you've just created with those isolated leaves on and then press Control U to bring up the saturation, hue and lightness level and then just bump up the lightness to the maximum and they'll be completely white. Now don't forget to do that with the bark texture as well and it's always a good idea to merge down your layers once you're happy and give them a good name as well. I like to put all of my textures into one Photoshop file so I typically name my layers Opacity, Normal and Diffuse. So once you've finished with this part of the tutorial, you should have one layer that's got your color map on, a black background like this, one that's got your opacity on, that should look like this. And then what I like to do is to have my normal map in here as well. Okay, now you'll notice that with the normal map, I've actually deleted all of this area, okay? So you'll notice that when you export textures out of substance, the negative area is filled with all of these stripes, okay? Now, with your normal map, you do not want any of these, okay? Because if those are still over here, they are going to affect the texture, and I don't want any of those corrupting these leaves, all right? So just make sure you go ahead and delete anything that isn't getting used. We only need this part of the normal map. Okay, so go ahead and save out those layers as individual PNG files and let's get back into 3ds Max.